Hello, I'm your green instructor. This is our first lecture in dimensional analysis. The objectives, we want to understand what dimensional analysis is, know what a ratio is and how to form ratios, know how ratios and dimensional analysis are related, and know what a conversion factor is and how to form conversion factors. Okay, here is dimensional analysis basics. Exactly what is dimensional analysis and what is it good for? Dimensional analysis is simply the process of analyzing the units to help solve a problem. It makes use of conversion factors and it makes sure that the answer has the correct units. First, we need to review ratios. A ratio is just a comparison between two objects. It doesn't matter what the objects are as long as you are comparing them. The comparison can be expressed using division notation. So in order to understand dimensional analysis, you need to uh, understand how to perform division and it'll be, um, you need to know how to um, handle fractions. Here's an example. Let's say that we have 16 girls and eight boys in a classroom. The ratio of boys to girls is 16. The ratio of girls to boys is 16 to eight or 16 divided by eight. The ratio of boys to girls is eight to 16. So eight boys for every 16 girls. Now these ratios are equivalent. Here we have the number of girls in the numerator and down here we have the number of boys in the numerator. Sometimes ratios are expressed using a colon. Now using our 16 girls and eight boys example from the previous slide, the ratios would be expressed as 16 colon eight for the ratio of girls to boys and eight colon 16 for the ratio of boys to girls. So you may have already seen ratios expressed using uh, the colon notation. However, for dimensional analysis purposes, the colon notation is not useful and we are not going to use it. Well, what's the purpose of ratios? The purpose of ratios is to, is to make comparisons. If the ratio is a proper fraction, then the number of items in the numerator is less than the number of items in the denominator. In this case, the value of the ratio is less than one. So if you remember, a proper fraction is just a fraction where the numerator is less than the denominator. So for example, one half is a proper fraction because one in the numerator is less than two in the denominator. Now, if the ratio is a proper fraction, then the number of items in the numerator is larger than the number of items in the denominator. This time, the value of the ratio is greater than one. For example, seven thirds is an improper fraction because the numerator is seven and is larger than the three in the denominator. Now in our example, the number of girls is greater than the number of boys. To be exact, there are two girls for every one boy. We could also say that there are half as many boys 
as there are girls. Now, what's the connection between ratios and dimensional analysis? Well, by including the actual object names in the ratio, we form conversion factors. And dimensional analysis uses conversion factors. So the connection between ratios and dimensional analysis is conversion factors. So let us rewrite our girls and boys ratios and include the object names, meaning girls and the word boys. So this time we're going to say 16 girls as opposed to just 16 and eight boys in the denominator as opposed to just the number eight. So our objects, girls and boys, have been included in the ratios. Now we can form an equivalent ratio of 16 boys with eight girls in the denominator. Now this is very important that you realize that these two uh, conversion factors are equivalent. Which one you use depends on what you are given when you're trying to convert from one unit to another unit. So again, the objects of interest, girls and boys, are now included in the ratios. Thus, the ratios have become conversion factors. Some people say conversion ratios. So simply including the objects in the ratios, we form conversion factors. Again, it's very important to realize that these are equivalent. Okay, below we show how to form two different conversion factors from various objects. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars and two moons. So we can form the two equivalent conversion factors, seven stars divided by two moons, or equivalently, two moons divided by seven stars. Here we have one fish and one chipmunk. So the two conversion factors are one fish divided by one chipmunk, or one chipmunk divided by one fish. And down here, we got one, two, three, four, five suns and one, two, three, four clouds. The two equivalent conversion factors are five suns divided by four clouds or four clouds divided by five suns. Now, we can write ratios and conversion factors for any two objects. It doesn't matter how many of each object we have, and it doesn't matter what the objects are. However, some ratios are special and are actually commonly used conversion factors that are used to solve everyday problems. The ratio involving centimeters and meters is one such special ratio. There are 100 centimeters per meter. Equivalent, equivalently, we can say that there is one meter per 100 centimeters. The word per simply means to divide. Therefore, when we see 100 centimeters per meter, we write that statement as 100 centimeters divided by one meter. So 100 centimeters, 100 centimeters per, meaning this horizontal bar, which means divide, meter, one meter in the denominator. So the equivalent conversion factors are one meter divided by 100 centimeters or 100 centimeters divided by one meter. Now, let me share the dimensional analysis motivation with you. Dimensional analysis is not 
part of the common core standards for fifth grade math. In my fifth grade, <clears throat> my fifth grade green math textbook that I wrote, uh, dimensional analysis is added to the textbook because I truly believe that dimensional analysis should be introduced in the fifth grade and waiting beyond the fifth grade is a disservice to our students. On my website, uh, there, is a, there is a series of lectures on fifth grade math. Now, other fifth grade math books teach ratios, proportions, and rates to solve the types of problems that dimensional analysis alone can solve. Because dimensional analysis is such a valuable skill and one that is not hard to master, waiting to introduce it at a later time after the fifth grade is truly, in my view, a disservice to students. Dimensional analysis can be used to solve many types of problems. It can be used to solve science, business, engineering, surveying problems. They all make use of measurements and or have to convert from one type of unit to another. So this is where the beauty of dimensional analysis comes in. It makes the conversion so much easier and much less prone to errors. Summary, dimensional analysis is analyzing the units, the units to help solve a problem. So in dimensional analysis, when we start doing some examples, we're going to see that the first thing we do is we analyze the units and make sure the units come out correctly in the answer before we start uh, tackling the number part of the answer. If you start tackling the number part of the answer, then you kind of circumvent uh, the objective. A ratio is a comparison between two objects. Ratios are used to make comparisons. And by including the actual object names in the ratios, we form conversion factors. And dimensional analysis uses conversion factors. Per means to divide. The reason that we, that I like, that I wanted to wait until the fifth grade to introduce dimensional analysis is because we need to know how to divide and we need to be comfortable with fractions. Here are some practice problems. But thanks for your attention, and we will see you at lecture number two. Goodbye.